Hi, I'm Mike Massimino. For the past few shuttle flights, we've taken you behind the scenes to meet the crews as they train for their flights and the people around the country who make those missions fly. But there's a lot of footage that we haven't shown you yet, so we'd like to take you back to some of our recent flights and introduce you to more of the people who do everything at NASA. We hope you enjoy this episode of NASA Behind the Scenes. So you've hung up their clothes, their spacesuits. Here they are, all seven of them. You can see with the flags on the left side, including the Japanese flag for Naoko. So we have six this Americans is, and Naoko. This is the pilot for the mission. This is Jimmy Dutton. This is Jim Dutton. Uh -huh. and this is his actual. This is the actual suit he will fly in. Uh -huh. and it, it has been prepped and, and leak checked in Houston, and then after we arrive here, we do another leak check here. And mm -hmm. then uh, on fit check day, Jim gets in the suit and he makes sure it fits. When was that? That was. That was on that was last night. As a last fact. night, okay. Yeah, uh, for Jim, because uh, in addition to the fit checks, Jim and uh, Commander uh, Alan Poindexter, they have the opportunity to fly uh, STA flights, right. uh, which simulate the, the landing approach that they will do on the actual shuttle training aircraft. aircraft. Yeah, right. So they get to train um, in in their actual in their space hardware. Right. So you had to so, suit them up yesterday, last yes. night, Correct. and he went out to the airplane and flew practice approaches, Correct. wearing all this stuff. Correct. Because that's what they're. I mean. It's, it's a lot different we wearing that than wearing your flight suit. Right, right. So we get that the, makes the training more realistic and then makes it most beneficial yeah. for them. Having the helmet on to restrict their, what they can see and the gloves on this hand right. to on the controller and all that. Go down, go on oxygen supply. The whole everything. bit, just like they're going to do on the shuttle. For, just for all right. Me. This is the pilot's actual flight helmet. This is the real helmet. This is his real helmet. Not the helmet. ones we practice with in Houston. Correct. This is the one that he's actually going to fly with. Although for training purposes, we install a, a training sunshade just to keep protect the, the clear visor. We're going to want him to scratch the clear visor. So uh, on flight day, we will remove this sunshade, install a, a brand new sunshade. But the but the helmet itself is uh, is just as you see it here. It will fly in space. All right, the real thing. These are his actual flight gloves. They've already been leak tested, and he wore them last night on his uh, on his flight training mm -hmm. on STA. And this is his comm cap, which is worn inside the helmet. This is it contains the microphones and earphones that uh, he will use to fly uh, on launch day. All real stuff. Now, one th one interesting thing here, uh, Ray, we've th we've seen this other times too, is that each crew member has a color, so we know That's it's whose stuff. And so That's Jim true. being the pilot, Jim. right, John, is going to be, Jimmy's going to be uh, yellow. yellow. Yes. So his bag has yellow on it. His gloves have, have a yellow marker somewhere. There Correct, you go. Right here. And his helmet also has there a you yellow go. color code. And for the back. colorblind, it also has the letter B on the helmet, right? Yes. yes. You can see that as the letter B, which means he's the second guy. So Dex, the commander, is A, and then Jimmy's B, and, yes. and then so on and so forth. So. This is the harness that they, they will wear on flight day. This is the actual flight item mm -hmm. that they will wear. Uh, it has a parachute harness that they will connect to their parachute. The parachute and this is, is dotty the, stuff, I see, because it's green, yes, right? And she's the MS2. She's, All right. All right. She's green. Okay. Uh, so, and uh, the, so you were saying the parachute yeah. is in the yep. orbiter. Uh, the actual flight parachutes are not here. Mm -hmm. Although oh, okay. we do have spares, and I can show you one of those. Okay. But, uh, but that's the harness that you were saying. That, that Dottie will wear okay, we should, on right. launch day. <clears throat> on launch day, and it con contains uh, a number of uh, emergency equipment items that right. uh, she will fly with, and hopefully not need, <laughs> but she will have it with her just yeah. in case. Right. And what I, has she got? I can show you a couple of those Yeah, things. show us what you can. Uh, she has an oxygen bottle that, that, sh that contain uh, a minimum of 10 minutes of, of pure oxygen. All right. She has uh, a life preserver. So in case something happens and they can't make it back to the landing site, they have the capability to bail out over open water. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a life preserver that's built into the harness here. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also have uh, uh, water packs.
For survival water, we have emergency drinking water. Because you need water. That's absolutely right. So if you're stuck out in the middle of the ocean, you got to drink. You can't drink the seawater. Correct. You got to drink that stuff. It, it could be a little while before the rescue forces come and get her. So mm -hmm. she needs a little something to drink. It's, it's absolutely important that yeah. she has that. But there are rescue forces out there ready to come get us. Absolutely. Okay, we we'll get these, you know, we're, and there, it should be pretty quick, right? But uh, it may take a while. It'll be the open ocean, but there are people ready to come get us but if we need every, it. Every astronaut carries uh, an emergency beacon mm -hmm. so they can be found rapidly, and they also have the survival radio so they can speak directly to the rescue forces. Right. Uh, absolutely essential items uh, for, for emergency only. Right. All right. What's that blue thing you just put on there? This is a, a comfort pad. Every astronaut has a, a comfort pad that they wear on the back because they're going to be, they want to sense the launching in the vertical position. They're going to be laying on their backs for right. for a couple of hours. It's, it's Sometimes it's not easy, but uh, this, this back pad uh, makes it a little more comfortable so they don't, uh, they can concentrate on their jobs and not concentrate on the, on, right. on the pain that they're having in the shoulders. <laughs> This is what you guys wear. This is what we wear on launch day. Right, that's John's. That'll All be right. mine, yep. All right, now what it, explain some. This is not your usual set of clothes. So what are the, some of the interesting uh, characteristics of this, of this fancy uh, jumpsuit you got there? Well, besides the fact that it doesn't fit very well, but it, it is kind of comfortable. All right. Uh, the reason why uh, it has all the green stripes on here, these are mm -hmm. pull, stri uh, pull tapers. So okay. we can just grab it and pull if we're down for, let's say, an accident happened on the pad and we need to get yeah. out of there. Your friends or colleagues can grab you and drag you away from any danger that you have. Okay. The reason why we have numbers on these is so the uh, LCC, the Launch Control Center, right. and NTD. NTD is uh, NASA Test Director. Right. The person who's kind of running the show. Right. They're the the launch. That direct us to do certain things right. up okay. there on the, on the right. pad. But they need to know who we are, and since our name tags are really small and so we don't have one on the back, right. they need to know really quick who we are. So we have numbers back there, and each number designates who you are and what you do up there on the pad. It's like a ball player. Exactly. Yeah. So like a number three is a, a suit tech, and he works on the mid deck. He'll be strapping in the mid deck. Ah. Uh, you have a number one who's an OBCC, the Orbiter Vehicle Crew Chief, mm -hmm. and he, he's the one that's overall in charge of the, all the closeout crew. All right. The number two is an astronaut or an ASP, as we right. call it, that's ASP. Astronauts, because that's astronaut, astronaut support, support personnel. personnel. And uh, he's the guy who's going to be inside there assisting with switch throwing for the right. astronauts, making sure that all the switches are correct, reading a checklist, doing comm checks with the astronauts after they're strapped in, and uh, dealing with all their needs that they need prior to liftoff. Right. Uh, the number three will be in the flight deck, strapping in the pilot, commander, MS-1 and MS-2. That's you. And that would be me on this flight. All right. Uh, the four and five, they're the hatch techs. They're the ones that will be closing the hatch. Ooh, they got to close the they door. They got to close the door. Do they right. have the key as well? They, they should they have look, the key, They lock right? the door? They All right, okay. Of right. The key. Okay. Uh, the number seven mm -hmm. is uh, another suit tech, and he's strapping in the mid deck, which is MS-5, 6, and 7 in right. this case. Right. And that will be Ray Cuevas. That's Ray right there. Ray right there. That's All right. right. Okay. Number seven, like Mickey Mantle. Right. That's right. There you go. And then the number six, which who I forgot, is the NASA quality. He's the one that's making sure all the paperwork and all the jobs are done to the checklist. So all right. Those are the seven people on the pad that you'll see in the white room. In addition to the spacesuits, we also prep uh, on some miscellaneous things so they can have it right there handy on launch day. So all right. If, whatever. So he's, you know, so he's got. So let's look at what he's got. Let's look a little closer here because we've got uh, we've got some cool stuff here. You, this is going to be on his, it's a strap like this, so it goes yes. on his leg, right? Yes, it goes around so his leg. So that's going to strap around his leg. We call it a knee board because yes. it's kind of on your knee. And he's uh, right. got, got some pens and pencils. And, but you know, but these are not your average, I mean, this is kind of like a regular pencil, right? But it, look, it's, exactly but it's got some like special it. features. It's got a... It's, it's, it's actually pretty ordinary. This except, is the kind well, of thing you can... Stuff. You can it's got, but it's got a lanyard on it. It has, it has a, a Nomex lanyard. Yeah. Uh, but and has some uh, hook Velcro uh, tape to it. But right. other than that, it's just an ordinary pencil that right. anybody can buy in, in a store. Yeah. It's, I don't I don't see it as being any really any different. But what you need to do but, uh, is you got because it's, it's going to float, and so you right. don't lose it. You know, I lose pens and pencils all the time on the Earth. You know, in space, it's it's, it's easier to lose it because it's going to float away from you. So you have it on a lanyard. You know, you can't yes. you can't lose it, and you have the Velcro so you can stick it. 
to another piece, uh, matching piece of Velcro so that it'll stay put. So. That's one of the, yeah. the first things astronauts learn is that things, things float away by themselves. So right. they, they learn in training and, and the, through the experience of others to, to right. and tether things down so they don't move. But it really becomes obvious when you get there and, and right. your stuff's floating everywhere. Yes. And you got a flashlight as well. Yes. And uh, that flashlight, of course, is on this, a lanyard this, with Velcro. This flashlight is, is basically the same type of flashlight that you can buy in a store, but it has an extra feature built into it uh, we've replaced the, the normal cap that goes on the back of the, the, the flashlight right. with a special, specially made device that's used to pull on circuit breakers. So yeah. he, can, he can take this flashlight and not only use it as an ordinary flashlight, he can turn it around, use yeah. the back it's end of the tool. flashlight as a tool yeah. to throw switches, pull on yeah. circuit breakers, and yeah. uh, a couple of other miscellaneous things that you can use this. this it's a very good device. idea. Yeah, it's a, it's a two-in-one thing and, uh, and it works very well. And it's, yeah. And it's easy to use, and it's it's always there. So right. it's, it's why, that's why it's so popular. And the gold clips. The famous gold clips. Yes, yeah. these are just ordinary uh, paper clips. Uh, uh, with all the computer technology that we have, we still have lots of paper floating around. They yeah. have a lot of paper instructions, paper procedures, and they need uh, they need paper clips in space, just like we do here on Earth. So, yeah. and the, this is what they use. They have Velcro on them, so they can attach them to a wall, and they won't float away. And uh, they're nice and big, so they can hold lots of lots of paper. Yeah. And uh, the astronauts uh, uh, use these uh, very very frequently. Yeah. It's, it's the little things that we need to to keep you keep you able to work like you do on the Earth, so stuff don't float away from you. Uh, you know, it, you can keep track of what you're doing. All that stuff is very important. Correct. We take lots of that stuff. Lots of that stuff. All right, what else we got, Ray? We have a stowage bag, and this is the bag that the commander will use to stow his helmet. After he gets on orbit, he's going to take off his helmet, and he has to put it somewhere. So this okay. is a bag that he's going to use to mm -hmm. put his helmet in and, and stow it, because he won't need it again until it's time for him to come home. Right. So he needs to put it somewhere, right. and uh, this is the bag that he's going to use to, to stow his helmet, gloves, and CCA. CCA so, is his comm cap. His comm cap. Right. That's correct. Uh, this is a headset that they'll use on orbit. After they get in space, they can remove their helmet and CCA and just use this lightweight headset for, uh, for communications purposes. Right. But they don't need it for launch, so they just carry it with them. All right. Okay, and we've got uh, timers. Well, timers, just ordinary, just so, ordinary uh, kitchen-style timers right. that, that anybody can buy, and mm -hmm. but they come in handy for for a multitude of different reasons. And because uh, a lot of things we do are on time, you know, things that you know you do this at this time, and you set you can set up a little alarm, or you want to time how long something takes. Because they want you know do something in 30 seconds later, do something else. You have uh, all these little timers to help you do that. Correct, and it it's also, excellent. in addition to the time, it also has a clock built in, so you can use that as a, as a watch. Is. So you know what time it is. Correct. All right, and then you've got your, uh, so you have a mirror, mirror as well. The mirror, commander has requested a mirror, and we will stow this in the orbiter for him. All right. And uh, the mirror comes in handy, because after they get in their seat, if they drop something, they can use the mirror to go to and see look for it. Yeah, he's not necessarily, he probably doesn't need that because he wants to, you know, he's worried about his appearance. No, no, he's worried. He's, it's a useful tool because because you can't see so well around the helmet, so you need a mirror to show you what's going on he behind you. To or to get some of the switches too. I bet you behind him that he can't see necessarily. That absolutely kind of over his shoulder, he can use that mirror to make sure he's got his hand in the right place Correct. to uh, you know to get the right switch. Yeah. These are what we call portable suit testers. They don't look very portable, but uh, th these are the testers that we use to do our final leak checks with the with the crew. When the crew comes in on, on launch morning, they'll walk in wearing their, their liquid-cooled underwear. They'll, they'll be suited right here in this room, mm -hmm. uh, in this chair. The uh, so this is one of the big chairs. Yeah, How long do they use these chairs for? Did Neil Armstrong sit in that chair? Uh, I, I, I don't yeah. think Neil Armstrong did, but I'm, I'm he willing to bet that John... He was in this room. Yeah. Yes. The, the astronaut, so, Apollo astronauts did suit up in this room, but so, the configuration of the room is very different. So before, let's just get this straight. Before any shuttle astronaut has ever gone to space, and probably that any moonwalking Apollo astronaut or any any Apollo era astronaut, before they went and made that famous walk out to the launch pad and got in their Saturn V rocket on Apollo 11 or any of the moon flights or any of the shuttle flights, they were in this room. This, this same very in this room is where where the where the day fact, started for them. If you look over here on the wall, we don't use these connections anymore, but. 
That's the reason for these extra pipes here. They used to have the test stands built into the wall here. Uh -huh. And uh, the Apollo astronauts had, uh, had, had couches. And this wall did not exist. I was told that this wall, that the wall was there. much bigger then. But okay. the, 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 the test equipment was hooked up to those bulkheads there. And, okay. uh, but this, this whole facility was used for the same purpose it's being used now. So they all came in here. Neil Armstrong, Neil Buzz, and Mike Collins were all in here getting ready to go to the moon. Uh, on Apollo 11, just like uh, shuttle astronauts today get to come into this room and right. on the, d the morning of the launch and mm -hmm. get ready to go. Yeah. Pretty historic, wouldn't right, you say? Yeah. Pretty cool room.